Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Touch. I am Darwin Campbell, the Outreach Minister for FSBC in Glendale, bringing you a very important message today. What I want to share with you comes from John chapter 15 and John chapter 12. But before we get to that, I want to read to you a poem that became a song, very famous song. Uh, it was called, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. It says, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, just not for some, but for everyone. Indeed, how true those words are spoken and saying in the year 2020, when we can look and see quite plainly that people have lost the real definition and the real meaning of love. When you examine news stories where the police have attacked innocent citizens, when you examine news stories where someone simply bird watching in a park has the police called on them just because of the color of their skin. We, as a society, have gone off track and we no longer understand the meaning of love because we are judging people by the color of their skin, not the content of their character. Well, I don't believe that's what Jesus spoke about in the book of John, in John 15, verses 12 and 17. Jesus makes it pretty clear. He says, this is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. Then in verse 17, he says, this is what I command. You love one another. Jesus makes it simple and plain that it is important for us to learn to love one another. As a matter of fact, if you look at the shirt I'm wearing, you can quite plainly see that it's L-O instead of L-O-V-E. The reason why it's L-O is because it represents how we're treating one another. It represents our half approach to love. It represents our lack of understanding of what Jesus said when he says, love one another. In our society, even in America, we need to stop paying lip service to the word love. We need to stop being selective about who we love. It matters not the color of one's skin or the ethnic background of one individual. Jesus says, love one another. Then he says also that in loving one another, we have to stop taking the tongue uh, the forked tongue approach to love. In other words, I make and create my own definition of love. Because you see, when you consider what Jesus has said about love, people, the way they use it today, love is being deceived. It's being misled. People are dying because of the lack of understanding of the definition of love. Indeed, as a matter of fact, Satan loves the fact that we don't get the definition of love. Jesus says, this is what I command, that you love one another, that you treat one another with respect, that you consider the love that my Father God has had for the world and sending of the Son, and use that as a defining point for understanding the meaning of love. Indeed, what did Jesus mean? when he said love one another. I believe he was asking us to be honest and genuine about love. When you talk about understanding the meaning of love, I think you have to go to Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 29. Therein lies the story of the Good Samaritan. You see, the Good Samaritan defines today to you and me what the meaning of love is. It's not calling the police on someone when they haven't broken the law. 
it's not even detaining someone to the point of putting your your foot or your hand or whatever on an individual in such a manner that you choke the life out of them. Love defined is the love that the Good Samaritan has shown. You know, when that Jewish man was beaten on that roadway and two individuals walked past like nothing had happened, the Samaritan man stopped and the Jews and the Samaritans did not get along. But Jesus makes it clear and plain what love is because it was the Samaritan who stopped for the Jew and it was the Samaritan who soothed that man's wounds. It was the Samaritan that took that man and put him on his own horse and brought him into town. It was the Samaritan who took that Jew to a place of lodging and said, hey, look, take care of this guy. And if he needs anything else, when I come back through, I'll pay for it. You know, love causes us to serve one another. Love causes us to be compassionate to one another. Love brings us closer as a people to help one another. That's what love is. That's the love that Jesus says when he says, my father loved you. I love you. I died for you. We need to demonstrate that type of love to our fellow man. Greater love, Jesus says, has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. That's love. Our cemeteries, our national cemeteries that we just recognized, they are full of people who know the definition and the meaning of love. Those cemeteries are full of soldiers who gave their lives for your freedom and my freedom. They are there now because they chose to be unselfish about their love and give themselves even to the point of losing their own lives. They did that so that you and I can enjoy freedom. That's love. That is good Samaritan love. That's Jesus love. That's God love. And we in America need to learn how to love in that way. To love till it hurts to give and to be compassionate and to reach out and to help one another so that we can stop the hate that's going on, so that we can stop all of the problems that we see bursting forth in our media between police and community and the distrust between society and government and communities. We need to come together and understand we need good Samaritan love in our communities and in our societies, in our state, and return to our nation. Love is not hurting a person. Love is not lying on an individual. We need to demonstrate love like the good Samaritan. He did not care about race, creed, or color. He saw a man in need. He did not put his foot on the neck of an individual until he lost his life. He sought to pick that man up and help him up off the ground. That's Jesus' kind of love. That's giving of oneself love. That's the kind of love that we all need to learn. Good Samaritan love. The police need to learn it. Protest groups need to learn it. Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America needs to learn it. Our Congress needs to learn it. Somebody in our society needs to step up and redefine the meaning and the definition of love. And that is compassionate and help and reaching out to those that are in need. Good Samaritan kind of love. Indeed, I believe that if all of us practice Good Samaritan love, we would see a decrease in violence in our communities. We would see less hatred and, uh, among the races. We would see less racist incidents happening in our society. And we would definitely see a decrease in police brutality. The friction and the unrest would be reduced if we understood good Samaritan love. You know, when we truly love one another, we make this world a better place. Let me say that again. When we love one another with good Samaritan love, we make this world 
a better place. You know, what the world needs now is good Samaritan love, sweet good Samaritan love. It's the only thing that can make this world a better place. What the world needs now is love, good Samaritan love, not just for some, but for everyone. Indeed, I hope this message has been an encouragement to you because you see, we need to stop this half defined approach to love and we need to completely spell it out. L-O-V-E. L-O-V-E. That's the kind of love. It needs to be whole. It needs to be complete. It needs to be well-rounded. It needs to be for everyone. Good Samaritan love. This message is brought to you by the Morning Touch. is brought to you by the FSBC in Glendale. We are glad to be able to do it. We hope it's been an encouragement to you. We hope that you have a better definition and understanding of love and compassion for your fellow man and for one another. Let's make our communities better. Let's make our nation whole again. Take away the half step approach to love and complete the spelling in Jesus name. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you again next time on The Morning Touch.